So this is our black bass. Mm -hmm. um, this is from New England. Okay. Um, this comes scaled and gutted. Um, one of the things, you know, when you're looking for uh, fish, you want to see that the eyes are nice and clear. Mm -hmm. um, and this guy, as they go, um, sometimes they'll get a little bit um, cloudy. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a little cloudy. That one guy's nice and clear. Okay. So then we can check the gills, and you want the gills to be really nice yeah. and red. Nice. Um, so and we know are. that this is a fresh fish. For sure. Um, a lot of times, because they have um, some spines there, what people do is they'll actually carry them this way, which can create, oh, okay. you know, kind of uh, cloud in the eyes a little bit before. Interesting. Um, so one of the things I'll do is I'll just take the back of my knife mm -hmm. and kind of come down here Get for any, any extra scales. Where do you typically source your fish from? So we, a lot of companies from Philadelphia, we have mm -hmm. some stuff direct shipped down from New England. We tend to stay mostly uh, with East Coast fish, with the exception of some Alaskan halibut and, mm -hmm. and king salmon. Nice. Um, and so we, you know, we're obviously, you want it in your restaurant or on the plate as quick as you can. Yeah. Uh, when the it's out of the water. Better. Yeah, exactly. for sure. All right, so for this, I'm just going to come right behind um, the gill. And I come down the back side. This is a pretty standard way of filleting a fish. Yeah, and this, these are a round fish, so as you come in, you go down basically to the backbone. Okay. All right? And then once I hit the backbone, I use the tip of my knife to just kind of come up over the backbone. And then I'm going to come right in here. And these are the ribs. I'm just going to slide right down the ribs. Sometimes you can go right through the ribs. Oh, really? And, and come back, and it's a little easier to kind of clean hmm. those guys up. You're just kind of hugging your knife right along the bones. Exactly. All right. About um, how big is this fish? About how many pounds? So this is probably close to three pounds. All right. Two and a half to three pounds. That's decent size for yeah, black bass. Yeah, it is a very nice size. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to break this guy up. There are some pin bones in here sure. um, that you can use tweezers to pull out. Um, but I'm just going to kind of slide in and give us two nice pieces. Okay. So you kind of cut the pin bones out? Yes. And this is our belly piece, which you can use for stocks, sauces. Nice. So I'm going to slide this guy right here. And here we go. You always leave the skin on? I do for bass, especially because mm -hmm. it's such a delicate fish and it's really nice and tender. Yeah. Um, the skin helps keep that together when you cook it. Mm. Um, it also... Uh, gets nice and crispy. It's yeah. one of my favorite skin Best fish. Part. It's yeah. a pretty skin too. Yeah, it is beautiful. Okay, so if you want to grab the flour over there, so I'm just going to come in. I'm going to season both these guys with a little salt. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little black pepper here today, um, but usually with fish, I like to use white pepper. Um, okay. I feel like it's a little bit more delicate mm -hmm. um, and kind of gives you a, a better flavor. But so for this, I'm just going to use a little tiny pinch here. Where's your fancy pepper grinder? Uh, you know what? I, I think I ran out this morning so quick I forgot it. Um, I'll forgive you this time. All right. So we're going to do, you know what? I'm going to do one side without flour just so you can see the difference. All right. Um, sometimes when, sometimes the flour is actually a little bit of a cheat. One of the things that you want whenever you're cooking fish, you mm -hmm. want to have um, a really nice you, smoke point. All right. All right. So we want to get it in there uh, right when you start to see some smoke, you want your pan to be nice and hot. And you always cook with cast iron, especially Pretty much for always, proteins. yeah. And I, I feel like it's the most affordable, mm -hmm. you know, best way to get really great uh, crispy skin for or sure. a nice sear on a chicken. Retains that heat yes, so well. Yes, it does. All right, so first I'm going to start with my floured. So one. you only dredge that on one side? Just one side. Mm, and it's just to help keep the skin really crispy. Okay. Um, with the flour, you have to be careful mm -hmm. um, because um, it can burn. Okay. Um, so we're going to add these guys. And you can see the difference on yeah. how much the one that didn't have the flour. That curled up a lot more. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so one of the things with bass, we want to come in and you want to put a little bit of weight because mm -hmm. that skin pulls together. Right. Um, so I just want to add a little pressure to it. Otherwise, you won't get all of that crispiness on the exactly. center part. Exactly. It'll be kind yeah. of steamed in the middle and mm -hmm. not so crispy on the outside. Um, so as we add our fish to the pan, we talk about smoke point. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you add something, the fish is cold. Um, so even though it's cast iron, right. it still cools down the oil. Sure. It cools down everything. So I'm waiting for the pan to kind of come back to temperature. Mm -hmm. And then once that happens, I'm starting to see a little golden brown. Yeah. Get some nice thing. I want to turn my flame down just a little bit. Okay. All right. Almost to like a medium. Okay. Um, 
And I notice you're not moving the fish around the pan. Not yet. Much. You have to be careful with this because mm -hmm. um, your skin could stick oh, at this point. Because right. uh, we don't have a, a good sear yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't want to tear your skin or sure. kind of rip it up. And you didn't score the skin at all. I didn't. You can that? do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of a, a little bit of a cheat sometimes with yeah. striped bass. Some of the skin's a little tougher. Right. So it's nice to do that. Salmon, it's nice to score it. With the black bass, I don't feel like you really have to. Okay. All right. Um, and I'm just going to come over here and grab my spoon. And we're just going to take a look. I want to be real gentle because it might not be... Well, it's, it is pretty nice. Wow. All right. So we're still cooking... Now, one of the things as you're cooking, you'll, you'll see um, that you might have some hot spots, mm -hmm. right? So as I'm cooking, I like to kind of rotate, just like you in baking in an oven. Right. I like to kind of move my fish around a little bit. Or like on a grill. On you a grill, have same, those spots yeah. That are hotter. Um, so we just want to kind of keep moving things around from there. So you can always kind of get to the hottest part of the pan. Exactly. And I think that's the other thing is, you know, your food's going to tell you. I think sometimes people get intimidated about something. Yeah. Just take your time and, and watch. Pay attention because it's going to say, it'll tell you what's happening and we'll right. see um, if one side is hotter than the other. Mm -hmm. um, so with the flour, because I, I'm cooking them both in the same pan, I have to be a little careful um, just because I don't, the flour could burn a little bit more than the one that doesn't have it. Oh, okay. Um, but I think we're kind of right on. Nice. With striped bass, you, you add your pressure and then you're done. Black bass is one of the, the fish that you kind of have to really? continually okay. kind of keep pressing. Um, and I'm not pressing super hard here. Right, so um, it's gentle pressure. Yeah. Now will you season the other side of the fish? So I don't season the other side until I'm ready to flip it over. Gotcha, why um, is that? Because the salt actually can pull out moisture from the fish, causing ah. your sear not to be as nice as you want. That's a great tip. Yeah, um, and you know, I do it with I do it with everything, whether it's chicken, meat. I don't know that it makes that much of a difference with something mm -hmm. like that, but it's muscle memory. It's the way I do yeah. it. You know, I don't it's have insurance. to worry about it. You exactly. know, it's not going to hurt it. Exactly. All right, so I think we're kind of ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut this off. All right. All right, So I, and I'm going to come in. I'm going to do a little bit of salt on the other side. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of butter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop this right in there. Um, this pan's really hot, so where I put my butter, I'm actually just going to add a little bit of sherry vinegar to it. Um, that was and, like a drop. Yeah, just a drop. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of lemon. Um, now, is that going to affect the crispiness of the skin? So this is, what, this is why I'm doing it this way. Um, so <laughs> I know I'm gonna, there's always a reason yeah. for everything you do. So I'm going to add a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of move this around here. Um, and then I'm going to flip, flip it. Got it. Right? Oh, that time. I'm not going to baste the fish at all now. Um, and if you just want to feel, wow. I think we did pretty good without the flour too. So I think yeah. as long as you're kind of paying attention to it, it's, it, it I'd argue the, the non-floured piece almost looks a little better than the flour. <laughs> um, all right. So there, we're, we're pretty much done. So I'm just going to kind of wipe this spot off here. Oh, as we incredible. And we've cooked it almost three quarters of the way on mm -hmm. one side. Um, so that flip over. Uh, and then we're pretty much finished. So that's finished. done. It's yeah. like an over easy egg. You right. just kind of touch it on the other side. Yep. And that's, you know, people always ask what, you know, how do I know when it's done? Really, once you have that beautiful sear, as long as it wasn't too hot of a pan, you're pretty much that's there, it. ready to go. Yeah. So, I'm just going to give one final taste. Did you want the parsley for that? Or? Yep. Let's dump the parsley in. And okay. this can go right at the end. So um, it stays nice and fresh. Yeah. It's really nice. It's interesting what the oysters did. That brine in there has really, um, it's kind of went with the lemon really nice, um, kind of blended together and brought it all around. It's really pretty interesting. All right, so we just add a little broth there. Mm. And I'm going to come right in here. And we'll use the non-floured piece. Gorgeous. Um, all right, and there you go.